Okay, Tech Ventures students, we're now going to switch gears. We're going to get away from typing and we're going to switch to a new Google drawing. Earlier, you saw some of the summer thing drawings that students made available to me. And now we're going to start a new drawing. Now, day four is going to show you not only some text, some specific part one and part two instructions, but I've also placed here uh, a drawing that I've made in the past. And this is going to be your first grade for our class. It's a drawing of a keyboard. When you look at the keyboard, you'll notice quite a few things. You'll notice basically the keyboard that you're sitting at. And uh, in addition to that, you'll notice it's color coded. Yellow keys represent when you use your pinky. Green keys represent your ring fingers. Red keys represent your middle fingers. And as you know, blue keys are gonna represent your pointer fingers. And this will help us with proper technique. The only other one I'm going to point at right now is the space bar. You'll notice it's a little bit darker blue, and that's because our thumbs press those. Now, not every key on our keyboard is going to show up here. If you look, the, the very top row of keys are not on our drawing, and neither are the four arrow keys. We leave those off as well. What I'd like to do right now is just show you the basic beginning and the setup. Uh, how we're going to go into the Google Drive and get started. I'm not going to draw the whole thing for you while you watch right here, uh, but I want you to get started on this today. So come with me to Google Drive and check out some of the techniques that I use, and then you guys will be going and working on this drawing as well. So I'm here on Google Drive, and we're going to be creating a brand new Google Drawing. I'm going to click on New. I'm going to go to More and choose Google Drawings. It's been a few days since we've done this, so when you're finished with the video, you're gonna come here, you're gonna click on a new Google Drawing. Anytime we create something on Google Drawings, we don't wanna leave it without a name for the file. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna give it the file name of keyboard. We're gonna call this the word keyboard. And there's keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you guys uh, the very top row. I've counted from the first key right next to the number one. That key is called tilde. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, hyphen equals backspace. I believe that's 14 keys that we're going to need. I'm going to start out with a shape that we've used a number of times. This is called the rounded rectangle. And it's really important that you get this first one um, as good as you can. I'm going to draw a rounded rectangle that looks about like that. When you look at my screen and my drawing surface, you can see about the size of that rounded rectangle. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that rounded rectangle. Switch back to my selection tool. And I'm going to do a few things to this rounded rectangle before I go too far. Now on the video, it might go a little bit fast. So if you review this on the video a number of times, it'll probably be a good idea. While that rounded rectangle is selected, I'm going to fill it with yellow. I do want it to have a black border. You'll notice it has a black border. I am going to thicken up that black border just a little bit. It's currently at one pixel. And I'm going to go ahead and make it two pixels. I'm going to take my pointer and I'm going to double click inside the rounded rectangle. An insertion point will appear. And I want to align that insertion point. I want that insertion point to be right in the middle. Don't use the space bar for this. I've seen a lot of kids try that. That doesn't work real good. You want to go on the toolbar to the align tool. I'm holding my pointer over the align tool. And there's two different things we're going to do for aligning. The first one is to center it. You will notice the insertion point move to the center. Now the second one is right underneath center and it's called middle. You probably won't see it really move when you click on middle, but nonetheless there's the insertion point. And that very first key is called tilde on the keyboard. I'm going to press the tilde key and you'll notice it's like that. I do want that tilde to be bold. There's a number of ways to make this be bold. I'll just give it a quick highlight and I'll click on bold. And now if I deselect it, I've got a rounded rectangle with a bold tilde inside it. I'm going to zoom back out to fit. I can see my whole workspace here. Hopefully on the video that's going to show up. 
And if you heard me say how many keys we need for the top row, I'm now going to make that adjustment. I'm going to do something called Control Duplicate. It's actually just called Duplicate, but it requires use of the Control key. While this key is selected, I'm going to hold down Control. I'm going to press D. Now, I know I don't need 14 tilde keys, but by doing this, uh, it can help work out pretty easy. I'm going to hold down Control and press D until I see 14 keys. I think I currently have two. Here's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. And if my count is off, I'll just delete one or add one, whatever I need to do. It's pretty easy to make these move. I'm going to go to where the border of them is, and I'm going to start moving them. Now, I'm going to move a few of them out of the way. You'll notice that if these overlap, they don't want to line up real good. So I'm going to move a few of them out of the way, and now I'm going to start moving them into place. You'll notice that the keys on your keyboard don't touch each other. There's a little bit of space in between each other. So it looks nice when you have that little bit of space like I'm creating. As you're watching me align these, watch for the red line to show up. I'm going to drag this one into the place, and when that red line there shows up, I know that I'm in a good spot. They're all nice and straight. I'm going to keep moving these into place. And it looks like I need about four more. Now I'm running out of room over here on the side. I'm now going to be placing my final one to where it doesn't even show up on the drawing. I just got to get this one lined up. There we go. And I can do a quick check. I want to make sure that I have all the keys I need. I need tilde, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, hyphen, equals, backspace. If you did like I did, where you, they're a little bit too big, I'm going to show you how you can fix this. You can use this same method if they came out to be a little bit too small. I'm going to take my pointer and I'm going to draw something called a selection box. You've seen me draw a selection box before. I'm going to draw that box so it surrounds those keys and you'll notice that they're all now selected. And what I can do is I can use these handles to bring it in. I'm going to bring it to about right there and see what it looks like when I let go. Yeah, they're a little bit taller than I want them to be, so I'm going to bring it up. And it looks about like that. You might have noticed that I left where my pointer is now. I've left a little space over there, a little extra space. Can you guess why I left a little bit of extra space? If your guess was because the backspace key is a little bit bigger, that was a great guess. What I'm going to do is deselect this. I'm going to come to this one and widen it a little bit. When you look at your backspace key, you'll notice it's, it's about one and a half times the size of all the other keys, so it looks about like that. I'm going to pause the video here for a moment. Um, I'm going to pick up another piece of the video and then show you uh, the final steps. Keep watching. Now some final steps for today, and you might get farther than this, but I'm hoping before you leave you have time to get this far. The final steps is to simply change what's inside each of the buttons or the boxes, and then to do some color coding along the way too. What I like to do is, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. We'll go back to the pointer tool. I like to take my pointer so it becomes what's called an eye beam. If you do a double or a triple click, sometimes that'll become selected. And all you're going to do is you're going to go along and change this to a 1, 2, and so on and so forth. If that happens to you, just select everything in there and get it to what it should be. Use the scroll bar to get over here so I can see the backspace key. 
we're actually going to do some typing in here. And it will say backspace. You'll notice that if you look at the key on the keyboard that says backspace, it's all lowercase letters. And you can make the font be smaller. It's at a, for me, it's at a 14 right now. I'm going to try a 10. It's got to go a little bit smaller than a 10. And there's nine. In today's video, I'm also going to show you the color coding. The tilde and the one should be yellow. The number two should be green. You can fill it with a shade of green of your choice. I think I'll use dark green one. The three should be red. Four, five, six, and seven should all be a shade of blue. I think I'll use dark cornflower. I think I'll use dark blue one. Number eight should be red. The number nine should be that same shade of green. And if you made your boxes yellow like I did, the zero, the hyphen, the equal sign, and backspace should all be yellow. Now think about this. If I don't show you any more of the video today, would you be able to maybe duplicate one of the keys, move it down to the next row, and if you happen to look at the next key down, it's called tab. Tab is a little bit bigger. It goes almost halfway across the number one. And then maybe you continue on your own this next row. As I said, I'm hoping that today you'll have time to get through this top row and maybe even get started on the next row. Remember, everything you need to see can be found at your Schoology account. You can use this video and the Schoology account to go through and get started on today's video, or excuse me, to get going on today's drawing called Keyboard. This is our first grade that we'll be turning in probably at the end of the week, so see how far you can get today. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.